Ahsoka, the show, the character, the legacy that was going to save Disney Star Wars. Well, that was a load of shit. Ah, uh, fuck me. All right, so the Ahsoka show ended last week. And while I feel like this is more than enough time for everyone to have seen, caught up, and formulate their own thoughts, as well as the many, many, many other people that have had their reviews up and ready to go the moment the finale ends. With all of the hype, anticipation, and reception over with, I would say at this point it's fair to say that the Ahsoka show was a mixed bag of wasted potential, missed opportunities, bland acting, set up without payoff, member berries, all wrapped up with a touch of brilliance and sense of direction that the Star Wars franchise has been so desperately avoiding. Basically, Ahsoka is incredibly average, never rising to the occasion of the highest points of Disney Star Wars like The Mandalorian Season 1 or even Rogue One, but never falling through the sunken place to reach the lowest of lows like The Last Jedi, Rise of Skywalker, or Kenobi. Man, why do I even do this to myself? It sucks because Kenobi is a fucking gold mine when it comes to dumbassery and incompetent writing. And while what I just described could be interpreted as mid, the Ahsoka show is not quite that. It's to a point where the show as a whole delivers a thrilling but maddening roller coaster of emotions and moral dilemmas to the mindset of actual Star Wars fans who want to see the franchise succeed and rise back to even a semblance of the brand's former glory. All while in the same notion, adding to the fire and increasing the ammo of the understandably disheartened fans who have been jaded just one too many times from past projects, as well as people who just frankly want to see Disney burn on the narrative that Star Wars is dead. And while it's no secret that I've been on both sides of the spectrum when it comes to the direction of Disney Star Wars, the Soka show is quite a unique take, and a very obvious trial run or job interview, so to say, for Dave Filoni. A showrunner and producer who, much like the show itself, has a very divided and passionate following in regards to faith. And while I'm going to keep this next part as brief but concise as possible, because I have no doubt in my mind if you're watching this video, you've seen the Ahsoka show in its entirety, we still have to run through the plot. You see, as mentioned before, the divided fandom and baseline issues for the show started right from the very beginning. Ahsoka follows the character of Ahsoka, and newly introduced, but also not, characters from Star Wars Rebels, an animated show that wasn't nearly as popular as its animated predecessor and counterpart Clone Wars, but a show that managed to have almost the exact same execution of expansive and plot-centric storytelling, relatable character development, and incredibly animated fight sequences. Fast forward to the series finale of Star Wars Rebels and coinciding events in The Mandalorian Season 2, the show picks up with Ahsoka on a mission having heard rumors about the return of Thrawn, an Imperial Vice Admiral from the Empire days who in a last-ditch effort is banished to some faraway galaxy with newly introduced, but also not, Jedi Ezra Bridger in the finale of Rebels. The show then proceeds to be a race against time and McMuffins in a chase to reach Vice Admiral Thrawn on his unknown planet, all with varying reasons, motivations, interests, and trauma to either return or stop him from returning to the galaxy. So let's meet the players, shall we? Morgan Knight's sister wants to rise up in the ranks of power, as well as see the restoration of her home planet of Dathomir. Ahsoka and the gang, who have lived through it once and have seen the power that the Empire wants to preside over the galaxy, Balon, a Jedi now missionary from the days pre-Order 66, 
who is by far the most interesting character, and unfortunately the character that we get the least amount of development in regards to his story in the search for a higher power that calls for him, Shin, who me and my brother have been calling Darth Swifty throughout the show and is just there, the New Republic, who is just as brain dead as you would think, and Sabine, who just loves Ezra. Like a brother or like a boyfriend is still up for debate. The season finale and show overall eventually ended on the point of being the exact opposite as the beginning of the show with the threat of Vice Admiral Thrawn and Ezra Bridger returning to our main galaxy, with Ahsoka and Sabine now being trapped in the unknown galaxy. And while I'm going to get to how maddening and further proves my point that this was just a show of wasted potential and setups without payoff, let's talk about some nice things first and get to the pros. Okay, let's just be real here for a moment. Member berries and fan service nowadays are a slippery slope when it comes to our Hollywood entertainment, and more importantly, when a brand or a franchise feels as if they're on their last legs, which is what many, many disheartened, disenfranchised, and haters of Star Wars like to say that this show is full of. And don't get me wrong, while on certain occasions I can understand their notions and ideals, I honestly just couldn't disagree more when it comes to this show specifically. Of course, we're talking about Anakin Skywalker or Darth Vader. All of the scenes, moments, and well, fan service when it comes to the relationship between Ahsoka and Anakin were excellently done and crafted with, yes, the fans in mind, but that's not a bad thing. Fan service doesn't immediately label a scene, narrative, or character moment indicatively bad, and Hayden Christensen, yet again, mwah, chef's kiss. He again just knocks it out of the park when it comes to his portrayal of his lifelong legacy character, and is important to the growth of Ahsoka's character in a show that she mainly receives so little of because of the high focus on not the highly fan-favorited characters. But there's no doubt and honestly a pretty popular opinion that the real highlights of the show were Balon OG Skull. And also an addition for me, Ezra Bridger, but we'll get to that. Rest in peace to the boy Ray Stevenson. I've seen it all over Twitter or X. Fuck off, Elon. It's extremely, and I mean extremely saddening that Ray Stevenson will never be able to see the incredible wave of fan appreciation that his character has received since the show has begun airing. But his mannerisms, dialogue, and choreography were nothing less than scene-stealing no matter the characters that he shared the screen with at the time. And in hindsight, Balon's last scene as his character was an incredible tribute to the man betraying him. A true legend. Ezra, on the other hand, is a completely different story. While barely even counting him as a character in regards to the people who never watched Rebels, that's me. And now hear me out. Like, actually hear me out. You know what? Turn up your AirPods or put on your listening ears if I'm on your TV. Because I'm about to say an extremely hot take. As someone who didn't grow up on the OT, but the prequel trilogy, stay with me now, this rendition of Ezra Bridger live action in the Ahsoka show, stay with me still, it could just be the actor himself, but I feel like he's the pure embodiment of a Jedi. Okay, relax. I know what I just said was crazy, but the feeling that Luke Skywalker gives, the feeling that he has, the energy that he brings, a sense of hope, opportunistic, positive, but competent, is the exact feeling that I feel as if the Star Wars brand as a whole has been so desperately missing post-Disney. Rey, Kylo, Finn, Ahsoka, Mando, all characters that Disney has introduced to a varying degree of character assassination to the character not even receiving the orders to lift off. Wet farts and tasteless puddles of characters that don't live up to the name of Star Wars and certainly don't have the strength needed to lift the brand up to its former glory. While I'm not here to say that the character of Ezra could do that, yet, 
the potential direction and the weight of the Star Wars narratives that could fit on this man's shoulders is astronomical in theory. But that's always what it will be when it comes to Disney Star Wars. And this is still Disney Star Wars at the end of the day. So let's get into the con. Okay, okay. So in order to get the rehashes out of the way, yes, the choreography is still bad and slow as dirt. It's just something that we're going to have to live with nowadays. The work and dedication to the craft just simply isn't there anymore. And again, I have to reiterate that I grew up with the prequels, so I wasn't sentient enough to see the hate of the choreography in those films. I just saw this as a kid and was like, fuck yes. And the worst part is, Ahsoka, or Rosario Dawson, is the worst of it all. Her battles with Balon, Morgan Knight's sister, and especially Hayden, and don't get me wrong, I'm sure it's not for the lack of trying or effort. It was just relatively obvious that she was out of her depth in regards to those characters mentioned before. It's really an incredible feat that Hayden's simple muscle memory of the character of Anakin looks so effortless and seamless to this day. But the lack of attention to detail was jarring and on full display on her battle with the one big pile of shit. who was able to display for the first time during the show the actual threat that she can be in hand-to-hand -hand combat. And surely was one of the best lightsaber duels of Disney Star Wars. Not for Rosario, though. I don't understand the direction of her character. I don't understand the stoicism. I understand we're in an age of girl bosses and hierarchy and all that. The message. Thank you. But the crossing arms looking at a distance look becomes boring and isn't even the character of Ahsoka that most of us know. The dialogue isn't bad in the sense of it just being atrocious and nonsensical, but more in the case of it being bland and boring, adding to the reason why Balon's dialogue and presence always sticks out like a sore thumb. No one ever actually has anything to say. Characters do things that require our characters to have deep conversations of motivations and reasonings, but yet, we never get that. Leading to the two main problems I have with the show as a whole, Sabine and Vice Admiral Thrawn. And I just want to be very frank here. Sabine's character is a full joke. Just her choice alone to basically sacrifice and hold the destiny to millions, if not billions of lies to the potential future of genocide and tyranny, all for... Ezra might be the dumbest character decision in the history of Star Wars. Combining with the fact that she pretty much faces no repercussions for her actions or even a firm talking to from her master for essentially damning the galaxy to the wrath of the Empire is mind-blowingly stupid. Her character is chalked and caked with convenience and an annoying brat attitude that no one in their right mind can actually get along with. Constantly disrespecting Ahsoka's orders for her own personal gain and never growing as a character since she never receives any consequences for her actions. Oh, and she should have died in like episode two or something. Leading us to Grand Admiral, Vice Admiral, Dad Bod Admiral Thrawn. What an absolute buffoon of character writing and introduction. Again, as someone who has not watched Rebels, this Thrawn was a pure dumbass. Choking and losing at pretty much every opportunity to win post Morgan Nightsister returning for his rescue, but somehow constantly turning it into a win for some reason. Again, much like Sabine, sacrificing unnecessary resources and lives for the sake of groping his own ego, and again, again, much like Sabine, never facing any consequences for his dumbass actions because he actually succeeds in leaving the planet. <sighs> it's actually just so bad. As mentioned in my last video regarding this show, I did and I still do believe in Dave Filoni's vision. But at the end of the day, Ahsoka is a show of setups and fan service. 
never rising to the occasion of the highest points of the Disney Star Wars era, but never falling to the sunken place to reach its lowest lows. A mismanaged show of wasted potential, missed opportunities, bland acting, half-assed choreography, buffoon activity, member berries, all again, wrapped up with the grace like a burrito that you rolled at 3 a.m. after a night of many, many shots of Casamigos, but with the additional touch of brilliance and sense of direction that the Star Wars franchise has so desperately needed. And while no, Ahsoka did not save Star Wars, much like how The Mandalorian, Boba Fett, Andor, and Kenobi didn't, the vision is there. Unfortunately, like most of Disney Star Wars, the execution leaves much to be desired. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Oh, also, I do have a second video coming out about this show. Not a review, that's this video, but more of an engaging, maybe a thought-provoking video? I don't know. I just thought it would be interesting to share that now. So, again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. But otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.